Hello, this is Max Drake. I just want to go through a little anomaly that I came across. Not really an anomaly, it's something that they do. From the point of view of, uh, I've been doing these Python scripts, and one of them that I was doing was actually just um, uh, scraping from a web page. And I initially tried coming in at the front end of the web page to, to get some data. Now, a lot of um, pages, they're public, but they don't actually like people scraping their web pages. So they say, no. You're happy that we're happy for you to look and consume and maybe take a screenshot of it, but we don't want you going in the background or, or coming in and scraping our data. And I thought, well, okay, then and, and you, you, you kind of look at web scraping, I hear people and they're saying there's things which are ethical and unethical and this, that, and the other, and where does the line draw or whatever. And one of the elements as I was coming through, I was suddenly thinking, okay, then I want to get this particular element through here. And uh, when I do an inspect, it comes through and it gives me that element. And if I just go um, get the um, uh, copy, the inner HTML, and I just fill out that and go V, you'll see the element zero, which is in there, comes out. You suddenly think that's fine. Then I thought, well, okay, then let's get the temperature. So I went to come into this particular one through here, and I hadn't come across this before. Um, but... Uh, it's a canvas and I suddenly thought well what's that canvas so I went to go into there to suddenly say well I'll get the inner HTML or outer HTML or CSS path but anyway I had this image data URL so I thought what's one of them when they're at home so I selected that and I just pasted it in here Boomf. and this turned up and I thought whoa and when I look at it it's basically an image so if I can actually just go save image as, and I'm going to save this image as one two three dot, and it's a, it, it, one two three, and it, it's a PNG. So it's going to save it as whatever it wants. So it's now saved the image. So I suddenly thought, well, what is that? So I just going to copy it and paste it V, and this what is what the URL is. So this is what the URL is. It says it's data. I'm an image type PNG and I'm a base 64. And then it's got all of this. And that's the actual URL that comes comes down. So I thought, well, OK, then what can you do with that Python? So Python says you've got to take it and you've got to use base 64 and you've got to get the data and base 64 and encode it. So it takes it, splits it. Or does whatever it does with it i just got a bit of code so you need a base 64 library to be able to convert it into an actual png file so i can write it out to a file so that's what i did so on this one here i got the selenium web driver and i said go fetch me do wonders and so if i just run this script through there and i've gone through and i've got that um, x path to that particular one so it's going to go through and get that x path it's going to do it make that magic happen so we run through this, it's going to pop up uh, to, to go and grab that information and then it's going to return it after it thinks about it. This is one of the things that sort of put me off of this front end web scraping because it takes so long to do. I do hope you're running. Doesn't seem to be, does it? Shift run. Oh, there we are. So it wasn't running. So no wonder I was getting impatient with it. The other thing, I'm running this one headless. Um, so it's working in the, I'm sorry, I've stopped, I'm, I'm not running it headless. I've actually got it so that it opens up the browser in a separate instance. So the Selenium web drive is opening up this page, generating all of the page. So once it's generated, then it will get that element. And then you can see it's being returned here. So we've got that element being returned in all of its gobbledygook. So that's great. So we've got that and it's converted it into a file. So I've got that file through there. So wherever it is, where's one, two, three? It's going to bang it in the middle of there, isn't it? Oh, sorry. Um, I called it this data to 64 XPNG. So there should be, oh no, what's, what's happening there? I'm confused. Oh, sorry, that was the other one. This one's done this way. Um, uh, uh, as I've done it through the file. So the first one that I did, I actually just got the browser link and I've just saved the file from there. On this one here where I've done it in an automated method, I've actually got it and it's done to this data one, two, three. Now, when we looked at the PNG, when it was in the browser, you can see it's got a white background. When we look at it, 
so if we just zoom in click and, and zoom in we've got all of that text setting on there and the text is on top of a spark line so the text is just pixelated images so if I carry on zooming in you'll see the text just gets more and more pixelated so we've saved the PNG file anyway and we got the PNG file through there and if we look at the data 64 if we zoom in on all of this and zoom 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 you can just see through here we can see the text number on a transparent background that's what that checker sits through there and you can see the spark line in green if we look at the 123 png file you can also see it's also the same uh, we've got um, a transparent background so for some unknown reason the browser shows it non-transparent so we have the same image both times so after I've actually gone and automated getting that, that file and bringing it through here, I suddenly thought, well, okay, then the next thing that we can do with that file is that we can go in and... Uh, whoops, what's it? Is it? That one there is called data to 64. Data to 64 xx we're going to go and get that image and we're going to use the pice test we're going to use pill pil to bring in the image then we're going to use pi tesseract um, library so there's pip install pi tesseract and we also have to install tesseract library which is an ocr program so that is an optical character recognition so it'll take that image and it'll try and read the text out of that so this is the one that we've come through here and i'm just going to go and copy that and we're going to call the text file through there so it's going to run that through there and we're going to get the file out now this is what comes out it's a bit messy so where's all of this where's my decimal points i don't mind that i've got these triangles because that's basically the degree symbol but because um, of the format that we just said go and send it as a text file it's just got them as diamonds I wasn't really interested I just thought can it read the actual numbers itself but you can see some of them is actually returning text rather than numbers some of them it's got the decimal points but suddenly it's got four numbers in the row rather than three numbers in the row and then I've got a whole load of other anomalies the other thing which I noticed a lot um, uh, with some of these ones here was sometimes you get a number like 41 and what it was the little downstroke on the left hand side of the one it interprets that as a four instead of a one so um, that's what we're getting out of that so you're suddenly thinking well that's not very good but the the reason why i sort of wanted to go through this process is that suddenly i thought well okay then i've got that data like that what say i go and uh put it into a regex thing through here and so there was this regex ai and i thought oh this would be cool to play with so what it says is you select the ones which are actually right and we'll use those to try and see if sorry that one i just want to delete um i want the 12.6 and so it gets what we're actually looking for and hopefully it'll learn from that and it will give us um, so it runs a few different scenarios through here uh, it's got a couple of the scripts coming through that I just sort of ticket at the front one through and it gives us some results but there's an awful lot that it doesn't and I was suddenly thinking well there's at least 48 because it's a 24 hour uh, two two days worth 48 hours so there's at least 48 elements there and I'm not getting that many of those out of there. So um, to a certain extent, I'm not too sexual. So when I was looking at doing this from the front end, I was suddenly thinking, well, look, only about a third of this are we likely to get. So with that regex. Now, I did actually um, suddenly decide that I wasn't very impressed with this uh, regex one by, by this one. So I ended up getting Bing to start writing me out a regex one so i said well okay then get that data in and go and fire it out to, to this other file so i've just run that one through there and it says try and convert that one through so that was a whole lot of rules based on a different uh uh image that ended up doing some other things in it as well but when i got that text data out you see 
Um, even now, I've got an awful lot of double commas and things like that, but it's also in, in reading on the wrong one. But to a certain extent, what I'm trying to highlight here is the fact that I tried using uh, uh, Bing Crosby to, to write some regex for me with the re library, the regex one, to actually see if I could convert it back to do. And I suddenly, at this point in time, I sort of paused and I suddenly thought, I'm not being very successful here. And this is an awful lot of hard work to get quite a little, quite a small amount out. And so when I start expending too much effort, I was only thinking, no, this is not realistic. So I was only thinking, well, I've gone to this much effort so far. There's a couple of things that else I just want to try. So one of them was maybe there's not enough contrast between the numbers and the background. So what I thought was, well, um, let's see if we can... Um, uh, let's see if I can make the background white. So I ended up using another program. Um, which one was that one? Sorry, I'm on three, I'm on one, one by one. Uh, was it that one? No. Oh, here we are. Uh, I used a different library as well, which was CS, CV2. So I took the image and then I tried to change the background. I also tried to do the stretching and some other. Well, that was just part of a script and somebody else had to do all this thing and morphing and things and stuff. And it ended up degrading the image so far that you couldn't even read the text. The text just um, was, was out pixelated and stuff. So that didn't work either. So again, it was just really tinkering and just exploring the, the variations of what I can do. So the last thing that I suddenly thought, well, I said, well, let's go back to that original one that we got through there. And uh, I'm just going to copy that. And we're going to go and, oh, I can actually just type there, one, two, three. And we're going to change that to one, two, three. Then I took the one that I downloaded from uh, the website. Uh, so when I actually had it in the browser, and look at the quality of this. Sorry, what's happened there? One, two, three. I think is the one that I got through there. And. Oh, sorry, it's got that second image path, so it's reading that second one. So look at this. Lovely. So it's it, it, as it's printed it on the screen, it's got the degree symbol on there. But when we actually look inside the text file, because we haven't encoded um, it to UTF-8 or something like that, it's not being able to read that symbol. But look, we've got the 10.6, 10.4, 10.4, 10.1, all of those things through there. So it's actually coming through nicely, apart from there's a couple of interesting things that happen. First of all, there's about 51 there. So if we, we, we've got a space between all of them. So in fact, we've only got about 25. So there's at least 48 to 50. So we've only got half the numbers that we should have. So it's only gone through half of the uh, image. So maybe it only reads that far and then it gets tired and it, it has to have a rest. Whatever, the content that has come out is really nice. So you're suddenly thinking, well, how come just by putting the URL into here and then saving this, save that image through there, we're able to get such good clarity via that method that we weren't getting via the other method. And so I ended up looking at the file size. And if we just do an F5 on that one again, if we look at the at this one here, this is about, now that's confusing as well. When we came, <laughs> this has got me really confused now. Um, when, we, when I looked through the uh, images before, <laughs> The PNG was from uh, which we've gone through doing the automated process of actually going to the website, getting the image string, putting it in, using the 64-bit uh, um, to convert it into a PNG file. That's come through as 57 kilobytes, and this one here has come through as 40 kilobytes. Now, the other thing with that that I did was um, I then clicked onto both of those images. So we're going to click onto that one. 
and we're going to get that one through there and we're going to click onto that one there and get that one through there now when we got this one uh we get the first image first um i don't know that that one we can go away if i get this image through here and i go through and i say resize image this one here is 6232 uh pixels wide by 138. so if i get the second one Oh, I close that down so um, if I get the second one and I resize the image we've got a smaller image inside here so you're suddenly thinking well okay then let's see if we can shrink that other image and then maybe because if it's more dense it might work so what we can do there is that we'll go back to the first image um, and we will uh, resize the image by a percentage um, and we'll say 90 so what's that and then we look at the pixels now we're still there so we're going to go 80 so that's about the size but we'll go a little bit further and we'll go um, percentage 82 about save oh and we're going to save that as data xx1 png so we'll save that and we've got that one saved now okay and if we now go into there it's actually increased the file size it's increased it from 40 to 69 so now if we just run that um, script on that particular file do, 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 do. Uh, and we want to go back to the other one out out and we want that one as png1 and we'll get that copy wow so what we actually need to do is compress at some point in time compress that file down into a smaller size and it will then give us the data we want so if we go into the data one Oh, no, we've still got dirty. No. Sorry, where did I write that one to? XXX1. So if we go into that one, we actually have the data and we have 115. So we say 114, so 7, so 57. So we've got 57 elements in that. So we've got a 90, 90, 90, 19. 1817 so if we come into the strip through here and we just go back to zero or come through the air 19 19 19 19 1 2 3 4 5 19 and 18 and a set so 1 2 3 4 5 19 and 18 and 17 so we've got all the data through there so that's what we really need to do was actually just reduce that file size down so that it was a, a bit more compressed so we needed to actually do a resizing on that file and then we can actually get it perfectly there so from the point of view of somebody's putting a restriction in their way to stop you from getting that data you can automate that element to actually get that data out so i actually just took it as a bit of a challenge but you've got to go through quite a few steps to be able to achieve that and then there's the kind of question is is it worth it or is it i i'll, I'll go and get that information from another method and if i'm out by a degree or two degrees is it that critical at the end of the day so um but i thought it was an interesting element that i've never um I haven't come across in web scraping and to a certain extent I just took that as a, a sort of a simple challenge to try and explore so uh, I hope that's been of interest to you um, I'll put the code up so that you can uh, play with that code and you, that, that, that particular element element to, to do it um, just be aware in my code um, because I w when I use VS code I go to my main python library a main python directory where i've got my files not in i don't run from a specific directory so that i can jump between files and grab code from other ones quite easily within vs code um, uh, so uh, you might have to take out that path when you're actually running these scripts and stuff but generally um, 
from going through grabbing that information from that we're writing the thing through to there I should actually write that information as in just the um, bits that you get out rather than that but to a certain extent it's 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 it's, it's an exercise in itself so when I first did it I was very very po disappointed with the tesseract um, in the resolution it was doing and trying to change the background didn't seem to work but seems to be if I can actually reduce that file size or not the I think if I can uh, shrink the proportions down it seems to make the um, text better read now that was interesting because I did that before and I thought it was failing on me uh, I, I doubled the size but I actually hadn't shrunk it because I thought oh, if I make it too small but it seems by making it a bit smaller it does work but it's nice to actually have the comparison but it was only when I I had it in the URL um, that I suddenly thought well something's working it's just I, I needed to identify what that is so uh, if you found that interesting uh, please give a thumbs up if not up on your heart